Hello, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Nelson, and if you've been following my, my last tutorial, learn how to turn on and off our background music to our game. The game is called Kill Them All. And what we're going to do this tutorial, this is a two part tutorial, and we're going to show you how to turn off and on the sound effects to your game. So, not only you could turn off your background music, you could turn off your sound effects and play the game in total silence. Now, there's a disclaimer my first part is going to be a little error correcting. Sorry, I know, I hate this. This is probably going to be my last tutorial because of the errors I keep finding. So, but basically, what we're going to do is this that I launched my little mock up. We're going to just put a checkbox on this page that's going to let you turn off and on the sound effect. I have a little error. If I don't change something at first, there'll be a problem if you put two checkbox because the second checkbox will affect the first one. So, if we both of these checkboxes and hit play the game, we shouldn't hear sound effects or no uh, background music, but we do hear the background music. And that's because the way I program this checkbox affects this checkbox for some reason. I don't know why that's something with the Java and I'm going to have to move some things around, but nothing bad. Again, it's error though. So I, I apologize. Again, this will be my last tutorial because I hate to show you one way and then say, okay, now it's wrong. Here's the right way. So I'll bring down this uh, mock-up and we go by our Eclipse as usual. And here it is, our Eclipse is up. Again, I like to start at zero. We're gonna go to the left hand side here to this Project Explorer. We're gonna find our project folder, which is called here it is, kill them all dash training, expand that. We're gonna go down to the SRC folder, expand this. We're gonna and we're gonna open up this package here inside. Now we're gonna have about three files open. It's gonna be about three. So it's not going to be too much. So the first file we want to open is go into this package and we're going to go down to the last file called welcome screen.java. Double click on that. And as you can see, as usual, it opens up in our work area. We're going to expand line three here to see all of our library files. And there they are. And now we're going to do what I call cleaning up the code or correcting our error. The first thing is this. When I first programmed, I had this chunk of code in this onCreate method right here. Then I decided, well, that's an error. Let's move it down here. So I made a method and I put the code surrounded into a method. I said that'll be easier to keep track. And as this thing grows, that'll be good for reusability. But I realized now that this is a problem. I need to take this part. So I'm going to highlight the meat of this whole code. Right click on it, say copy. And we're going to break it down here to the, the launch button method. We're going to click at the end of this line, create some space, and we're going to right click on it and say paste. And what we're going to do is we're going to allow the launch button to run the code that checks if the checkbox is actually checked or not. And the reason why is because if I leave it up there, you, there will be errors, so we got to get rid of it. So since we have this checkbox one into launch button method, we can get rid of this method here. Just highlight the whole method, hit delete. And this is what you should have. Now, of course, up here, the call to the method we just deleted is now in error because obviously it's gone. So we're just going to delete that line. And here we are. And if you ran it right now, it worked perfect. But we have another error on this page I'm going to correct. We're going to go down here to the launch button method. And we're going to, here's a checkbox. Here's the actual launch button checkbox. Right here at the end here, we're going to hit enter, make some spaces. And what we're going to do is put the clear variable from one page and we're going to move it up to this page. Right now it's in the main page that resets the variable and we're going to put it here. And the variable we're going to reset is the background check of variable and we're going to equal to zero. We're going to reset it here. So now that way when the game is launched and in the launch button and it comes back here, it'll run into this code and it's going to reset this variable to zero. And we need that. Because that's if I don't do it, it'll be a little error. So we have to put that in there. And that's it for that page. Now we're going to go back to the left hand side to the Project Explorer. Go back into our, our SRC folder in the project. We're going to go to the main Java file right here. We're going to double click on that. It open up into our work area. And we're going to go to line three again, expand the project folder. I just like to open these up so we can see all our lines of code. And then we're going to go down here to what is my line 34 and 35. This is where we set our variables back to zero. I'm going to get rid of it. We don't need it as we highlight it, delete it, hit the delete button and keep deleting to make it look pretty. And so because we don't need it there anymore. And if we go back to our welcome screen.java page up here in the top tab, click on that, 
because we actually moved it here. Now, yes, there were two variables that reset in that main page, but we don't have to worry about just reset them too. If we set this one here, then whenever we go back, that second one always get cleared out. So just clear this one right here and you should be okay. And so now your program, I'm gonna scroll up, and now we're back to this page. So we're set. Now we can start actually programming again. So sorry about this error correcting. This housekeeping need to be done. I'm sorry. Again, I hate to show people one way to do it. They say, well, it's wrong. You got to change it now. I, I realize now what I should have done is made all the changes to the program I wanted. Then I could have deleted everything and restarted putting it in one by one. And I won't have to worry about errors because I already tested it. But too late now. I'll learn from my next tutorials if I ever do another project. Okay, well, we'll go over here to the left-hand side, to the Project Explorer. Go back to our project. Um, obviously, it's killed them all. That's right. We're going to go all the way down to the RES folder this time. We're going to go down to the Layout folder inside the RES folder. Expand that, and we're going to double-click on the WelcomeStreet.xml. So now this is the part where we're going to actually start changing our code to start controlling the sound effects. So we're going to do what we did last time when we did this button here. When we start controlling the background music, we're going to add a checkbox to this page. So I just click in anywhere in the page, deselect, the, deselect everything. I'm going to go over to the left-hand side to this palette column into our form widget folder right here. And we're going to find the checkbox widget. And we're going to click and drag it onto our page. And, you know, we see our alignment lines. We're going to let it go where you see it looks nice aligned. And there it is, our checkbox in there. Again, like we did the top, uh, the background checkbox, our text, is, our default text that should say checkbox is missing. It's there, it's just the color is not black for some reason. And of course, our, our obvious warning sign that says we should make the text a string and not just hard text. So let's go to the right, with this selected, as we see here with the resizing box, let's go to the right hand side over here to the project boxes. And as you can see, this is checkbox two. That's the ID number. Again, we want to keep track of that. We're going to need that. So write that down or just know where we can find it. And you can see the default uh, text in that box is checkbox. And it's not showing because of the color. So let's go down here to this box here where it says text color. And we're going to go in there and we're going to uh, delete, hit delete. When it's all highlight, we're going to add color now. If for some reason it was off. We're going to make it black. So we're going to hit the pound sign and hit six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hit enter, and when you do that, kids got a zero, not O's. These are zeros, and you can see our familiar color box show up, which means hey, it worked, and this is the color we selected. And if you look over to the left hand side on our project, we see that checkbox is now visible. But we still have the error that says, you know, the warning that says we should make a string. So let's go back over here to the project file, go to the text boxes right here, and we're going to hit highlight that, hit delete, and we're going to make a string here. Again, we know how to do that. We go to the end of this box, to the familiar box with the three dots in there. Click it twice, so our resource chooser shows up. We know this is gonna be a new string. We can see all the string in our project. We know there's not a string that we, we need to create it. So we go to the new string button, click that. And let me drag this down a little bit. And now we can start making the new strings. The first thing we're gonna, in the top box called string, we're gonna, the value, what is gonna be shown on the, our page. You see this called turn sound effects off and we're going to call the string turn sound effects underscore off so this is what we call it and this is the value what's going to be on the screen and once we do that just hit go to the bottom down here hit the ok button once you do that we're going to go over here we're going to make sure it's selected in the, in the main box turn sound effects off and hit the ok button and when you look at the right hand side, the text box is still highlighted and you see that actually the string's in there. You look to the left hand side, you see that, yes, yeah, it says turn sound effects off. The warning sign is gone. And so we're good to go. We have successfully selected our, our second box, our check box in there. This page is done. Again, if we go down to the bottom here of the work area, we see the tabs. The graphic layout tab is what we're looking at now. Let's click on the welcome screen.xml tab. Scroll all the way down on this page, and here's the code that we just added. So we know it looks good. And this is, again, name that we need to keep track of. So again, write it down if you like. Let's go back over here to the Graphic Layout tab. Click on that. Bring that up. And so we're good here. So now what we're going to do is go to our Welcome Screen Java page. 
and here it is. We'll go to the top of the work area, the tab. We'll go all the way to the left hand side, the welcome screen.java. Click on the tab, we'll bring our page up, and now we're going to actually start the coding process of putting the functionality or the method behind that checkbox. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to create a new variable. And we're going to do it up here. This is our old variable we made, so this will be a good place to create the second one. We're going to call this a public static character. And we're going to call it a sound effect. Now, we're going to do this one different than we did the last one. Sound effects on, and we're going to say it equals, and we're going to use one quotation, a single quotation mark, Y, and then we're going to close the, that line with our familiar semicolon. Now, we just created a public static, which is a global variable. It's the format of character, and the name of it is called sound effects on, and it's equal to a Y, or actually a lowercase y. Now, what this is saying is, why did I make it different? I couldn't make this an integer as well. But I decided to show you this because this is going to make this more graphically understandable. And it's also going to make it a character because characters are smaller in memory than integer. When you make a, a variable and you whatever type you make it, an integer or character or whatever, so much memory is kept for that variable. So the smarter you can make the variable, the better. This one is kind of wrong. It's not wrong, but it's a big variable. So I decided to do it right this time. And this time, instead of using an integer, which is a 32-bit memory block that's, that's taken up, I use character because a character is only a 16-bit memory block, so it's smaller. And it only holds one character. And the character I'm going to hold is Y for yes and N for no. So the name is sound effects on, yes, Y for yes, or N for no. Now what we're going to do here in this variable, we're going to do some we didn't do it before, we should have. I'm going to go to this first variable here. We're going to scroll over here. We're going to do a comment on there. And we start comments, obviously, with two, uh, four slashes. And we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put a leisure. So I'm going to say zero equals turn background music on. And one equals turn background music off so now we know if this variable is zero that means it turns it on and if it's one it turns it off we're going to do the same thing here we're going to have a little leisure here so that way somewhere in your code you know how what these variables are and i'll say this if if this is a lowercase y that turns sound effects on and if it's a lowercase n turns sound effects off so now we know if we look at this page when we look at these we know what they do and what values that the only values they can hold and uh, that's it we're going to end this tutorial right here we're running out of time and i'll see you on part two on how to add the functionality of turning on and off your background music uh, thank you for listening and please find tutorial 2, that'll be 2 or 2 of this project. Thank you very much for listening.